So James chapter one, verses one through eight says this. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith when with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Good morning, Pat. So, you know, James, after talking about trials and standing firm in the midst of the trials, growing in steadfastness, well, I think he kind of does the same thing we do, and we go, well, yeah, we're not very good at that, are we? We don't like the trials in life. We don't like those testings. We talked about that a little bit on, on Sunday. We, we don't like it. We don't like it at all. Not a bit. And, and so because of that, we run from them. We don't lean into them. And so then we're lacking. We're lacking. And, and he gets to that in the next point. We're lacking. If we're honest, sometimes it's not just wisdom, right? He puts wisdom at the top of it all, but it, it's sometimes it's we're lacking wisdom, which leads to a lack of faith. We're, we're lacking wisdom, and it leads to a lack of perseverance. We're lacking wisdom, and it, it leads to a lack of strength or stick to Fortuosity, right? For uh, all the old Disney um uh, movie watchers, it was a song and Happiest Millionaire that I so want to sing right now because that came to my mind. But uh, um, old Happiest Millionaire, got to check it out. Great movie. But uh, um, we're lacking. On our own as human beings, we are lacking. We've been tested and we've been found wanting. Now we can be hopeless or hopeful because God, but God, we did a whole series on that, but God, and that's a pretty big, but, but the thing is we sometimes put limits on God, don't we? We don't see it as a big, but we see it as an afterthought, but God. We see it as a last-ditch effort. We put limits on our God. We like a God that fits very plainly and clearly inside of the box that we've created for him. The box of my understanding. What I think God ought to be like. And if we're not careful... We begin to doubt his nature. Is he really good? Is he really kind? Is he loving? Is God really in control? I mean, come on. You know, a guy just this week drove a car into a parade route, and the people that died were a group of senior citizens who were all about fitness and, and something grannies. I don't remember the title. It was a cute little title, but that's who he accidentally hit and killed. Where was God? Was God in control of that? We can leave ourselves with doubt when we expect God to fit into this perfect little picture to show up and make sure that only good things happen to good people and all the bad things happen only to the bad people. That if we had enough faith, then we would never be sick. And if we had enough faith, then we would never have cancer. And if we had enough faith, then anytime something comes, we would be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, right? But sometimes those trials come for our good to be made stronger and wiser, to grow our endurance, our perseverance, our character, like we talked about yesterday. We are lacking. 
We sway back and forth in, in the emotions of the day. I'm guilty of that. We're all guilty of that. We get caught up in news. We get caught up in just the seeming facts around us. You know, we have quite a few people connected with our church right now, amazing people who are having major health issues and, and a big surge in COVID, uh, even with people in our church, luckily that haven't got it at our church and hasn't spread at our church, but they've got COVID and some of them were hospitalized, right? And And those are sad, depressing things if we're not careful. We have an individual right now connected with our church, her, her mother, Robin. Um, she almost died. God saved her. And, and God shown miracle after miracles, but now her hands and feet, because of some medicine, uh, are, are basically dead, dying. They're black. And they may need to be amputated. And it's easy to go, God, where are you on this? Robin served you faithfully for decades. Why? And yet, we can look at it and go, and Sarah, her daughter, shared three different major testimonies of what's happened through this, that God's gotten all the praise and all the glory. See, we can look at the negative aspect of it, and forget God. Instead of realizing that God has a purpose and a plan. That doesn't mean he causes everything to happen to us. He doesn't cause the cancer, but my God can use it to his glory and benefit. Sin and darkness that entered this world has caused the decay and the brokenness and the disease, but my God can use it for his glory. What Satan meant to harm, God can use for his good. We must choose God above all else. To love his words more than the air that we breathe, more than life itself, more than our kids and our family. We seek after God as a deer panteth for the water, so my soul hungers after you, the psalmist said. That should be the picture of our hearts. James is here contrasting God's character with yours and mine. God's character, his holiness with yours and mine. And he uses it with this question of, do you lack wisdom? Do you lack wisdom? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Now, ESV is a very literal word for word. In English, sometimes you you can get you can get um, distracted when you're reading because of it. uh, In the Greek and the Hebrew, it might have had a different tense because it's kind of like when you speak in Spanish. You know, you put your verbs in different spots or your nouns in different spots than you would in English, and and. Sometimes in the word-for-word translations, we get distracted. Same thing. So like here's an NLT version of that. And the uh, this breaking up of the verse made it a little bit more readable in English. And now somebody might go, well, they just changed scripture. No, they didn't. They just translated it. Um, And so verse 5, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Two different sentences. And I just point that out because, you know, we sometimes read things and we go, wow, that that made more sense here than it did here. And that's why every year when I read through the Bible, I, I read through it in a different version. Because each different version has a different way of speaking uh, uh, speaking to me. And so um, I, I throw that in there just for, for the fun of it there. But God gives generously. He gives generously. Human beings, we give selfishly and with ulterior motives. We have to be thanked, right? 
That's our American culture. I give you a gift. You had to give me one back or a thank you, right? That's the gift, the thank you back. And if you don't give me a thank you back, then therefore you didn't appreciate me and you didn't appreciate my gift. And therefore I'm not going to give you another gift again. Or if I do because you're family and I have to, then I'm going to do it begrudgingly, right? That's, that's our American culture. We give thank yous for thank yous. You know, it, it's just, it's crazy. We do it with ulterior motives. You know, I, I was told or I heard a, a sermon one time and said, don't ever let somebody borrow something that you're not willing to part with. And how fitting that has been, because there's been numerous things that I have um, let people borrow that I've never gotten back. Never. When we hold tightly to things, respect. Well, they disrespected me. Well, maybe they didn't even realize they disrespected you. Maybe they grew up in a different family, a different culture, and they don't understand that part. But we expect certain things. And so we give with selfish and ulterior motives. And James goes, but our God does not. He gives generously. Are you lacking in wisdom? Then ask our God who will give and give. God's gifts aren't with reproach. It's not a backhanded blessing that God gives us. When you come to him and go, God, I am, I've sinned. I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. He doesn't go, well, <laughs> I told you so. I knew you would. How, how idiotic of you to fall to that temptation again. Did you not see it? How many times? No, he doesn't forgive with reproach. Our God is a loving, good father. And when we come to him honestly repentant, he wraps us up in his arms. You know, that's the... Uh, Isaiah verse, Isaiah 40, about the uh, eagles. So an, a mother eagle at a certain age will shove the chick, the baby bird, out of this high nest. And that baby bird will plummet, plummet to the ground. Talk about learning through in the fire, right? They have to figure out how to fly. But just before they reach the ground, that mother bird swoops in, picks them up on its back, carries them back up to safety. I wonder if we looked at trials a little more like that, right? He doesn't fault us when we need, when we cry out to him. Humans act like it's your fault you're in the mess you are in and are in the need that you are in. And so we don't ask for help. We don't ask for help. We're prideful. Don't let anybody know what I'm going through. You know, I, I think I said it on here, and if not, then maybe this is the first time. But in the middle of COVID, uh, there was a day where um, I, I kind of had a near panic attack. Anxiety uh, for for two of the kids that were having troubles breathing. Um Mandy wasn't feeling well, and I was having issues catching my breath and, and breathing, laying down. And, and, and so it just was so overwhelming that anxiety kicked in. But I took it to God, right? It didn't go away in an instant. It, it took a couple hours. I had to walk around numerous times. I had to catch my breath numerous times. You know, I had to calm myself down numerous times. But when I go running to the Father, He doesn't go, you idiot. Why don't you trust me? I mean, how many times are you going to use me as a crutch? How many times are you going to forget about me until you absolutely need me? Maybe I ought to leave you in your anxiety attack so you realize you need me more. That's not our God. But sometimes, because we put God into a box we've created, we create a God like that. God who faults us every time we're in need, and so we don't run to him first. That's what James is calling double-minded. 
We know that God is good and big and loving and that God will step in and he'll show up and show off. But we don't always run to him first. We fear him. And think he might rebuke us, fault us. So we don't go to the very one who can help the author, the perfecter of our faith. And so we do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. We must ask in faith. Does faith need to be huge? No. Jesus said, faith of a mustard seed. See, it's not about your level of faith. It's not about you. It's about who your faith is in. the greatness of our God. It's about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. It's about obeying him without reservations. It's about obeying without being storm-tossed. without being the wheat blown around by the wind, the chaff blown around by the wind, as Scripture says. It's about no matter what, placing as our very foundation, our trust in a God who will not disappoint. A God who will always get the glory. It's about not being tossed by the news of the day, current events, current crises. It's, it's not about inward debate. We do that a lot, don't we? Well, maybe that wasn't from God. Maybe that was the uh, pizza I had last night. Maybe that was the um, salami. Maybe the meat was bad. Maybe uh, and we begin to second guess instead of just listening to the Holy Spirit. Does it seem hard? Does it seem hard to trust does it seem hard to obey, to have faith, to go to God first? Yes. Does it seem nearly impossible some days? Absolutely yes. But here's the deal. Our God is a master of the impossible. Our God steps in and shows off when he can get the glory. Our God is the one who said to the Apostle Paul, I am made, uh, I, I am uh, my greatness as shown in your weakness. My strength is made known. And yet we don't like to show our weakness, do we? Without God, it'll be impossible. Without God, you'll continue to butt your head up against whatever your current wall is until you are bloody. Without God. But here's the thing, with God, all things are possible. So ask him for wisdom. Ask him for guidance. Ask him for direction. You realize here's the thing, we're not asking him for knowledge. Knowledge is, knowledge is what we know. Wisdom is application of that knowledge. You might know how to overcome your temptation. You might know how to, what steps you need to take. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the AA and they have steps. But, but here's the thing. You may know all you need to know about what you need to do to turn and flee from temptation. But that doesn't mean just because you know that you do it. You know, I knew that in that moment, I would breathe. I knew that in that moment, we were okay. I knew that in that moment, none of us needed to go to the hospital. But in that moment, for me to take that knowledge and turn it into wisdom, I couldn't do it on my own. I had to rely on God. He's the one who takes our information, who takes our knowledge, and turns it 
into wisdom. He's the one who can take the coal and turn it into a diamond. Sometimes that takes pressure. So whatever it is that you're dealing with right now, can you lean into him a little bit? Could you learn to trust him a little more? That he's not going to rebuke you? He is not like your earthly parents or or foster parents or whoever raised you he's he's not like that that you know that uncle or that aunt or whoever looked down on you that friend's parents none of that that ex-husband i I don't know what it is for for you or ex-wife it god does not rebuke you when you come to him god does not Hold those records of wrongs for the repentant. He doesn't give us a backhanded blessing. He wraps us into his arms, calls us his child and his heir. Would you lean into him this week? So God, I just thank you that you are my fortress an ever-present help in times of troubles. Whom should I fear? With you, God, I should fear no one. So, Lord, may we see you and get you out of our box we've created, out of a simple God that that just shows up like a genie in the lamp, that we ignore you until we need it, need you and rub that lamp and call out to you. God, may we let you out of that. Like a simple child song, can we just simply believe that my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. God, show us this week how big you are. Lord, help us to run to you, to trust to you. And if there's knowledge that we need turn to wisdom, may we turn to you. So God, we cry out to you today. Be with us. Be with us, Lord. Lead us and guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 We'll go in peace. And I pray you have a great rest of the day.